Hi, everybody. Welcome to tonight's shir with us, with the, with the Chevra, with, the, with, with, with Rabbi, Rabbi Daniel Kalish, Rabbi, Rabbi Coach Menachem Berfeld, and me. And we're tonight with Shemesh Gatshemed Chizik. We have a lot to talk about. We're going to try to chop around. We're with the Friedlers, so Baruch Hashem, we're fa- family and friends. Let's have a good time. Okay, tonight's shir is shir 129. And again, we start every week, first of all, thanking everybody who joins us, that puts it on their WhatsApp statuses, they email people about it, let people know about it. Obviously, uh, Rabbi Kalish put it all over the place. Uh, it should be a tremendous chizik, and I appreciate the people letting people know about it. And every Sunday night we do that. Again, if anybody wants to join the, the you know, can email, WhatsApp me at 848-525-0066. And that's 848-525-0066. If you want to get this, with the WhatsApp flyer every week, or you can go to menachembarenfeld.com you can sign up for his emails every week you know, the flyers the recap, all important things and uh, so please sign up, anybody's watching the replay of this on YouTube, you can click on the on the subscribe button, you can also click on the, on the like button I mean, Menachem Barenfeld can make millions of dollars on all, the, on all the likes, so please look us up again, first also thank you to all the advertising starts, sponsored the Lakewood Scoop Ellie Nairo from Five Town Central, and special thank you to Kyla Kaufman from JCN for always promoting us on all the digital platforms. Again, if anybody's here the first time every Sunday night at 9 30 on the Zoom ID, uh, we have tremendous topics and um, tremendous rabbonim, tremendous therapists, people in Machazic Israel. The stories that go through the, through, through these uh, through this year are unbelievable. Every once in a while, me and Menachem was to hear some amazing stories. We have we have a book that's coming out about the book, the, you know, behind the scenes. We're working on it, right, Menachem? <laughs> Behind the scenes of behind the scenes. So Mr. Shem, hopefully when it comes out in 2027, we'll give it out to the Saitis. But please join. Um, again, next week we have January 29th, it's gonna be amazing shit with world famous Rabdava Goldwasser, who was here once before. It's in Flappish in Lakewood, it's a tremendous speaker, Mamsha Adam Gadol. He wants to talk about faith on fire, Altisayash, never to give up, people that are in very difficult months of him. It's a, it's a very tough topic, and he wants to really give chizik for people that are going through difficult times. It should be very powerful. Please join. Please let people know about it, and uh, hope to see you all again next week. Tonight, we have the in the honor of having World Service Rabbi Daniel Kalish, who was here a few times before. Every time Rabbi Kalish came on, I was mechuzik for weeks. But I'm upset, because he only comes on every once in a while. I need, like, every two, three weeks. You know, it's possible I need more and more and more. So, well, I'm not going to have tainas. You know, it's not Rosh Hashanah, but uh, the oil needs the chizik, so we, we need it. And Rabbi Kalish loves coming here. He says it's a place we could be real. So, that's... Uh, Rabbi Kalish is into authenticity. So we're going to change the name to Let's Get Authenticity. <laughs> and again, tonight's shir, un- unmute Arnoich. Tonight's shir is a Gematria 129. Arnoich, unmute yourself. Arnoich, what's 129 big Gematria? Before I say the Gematria, I just want to say that I spoke a few weeks ago to a Choshev moderator, head coach Ushi, about the must need, get, we must get on Rabbi Kalish again. And I truly feel that every shir that we have on Let's Get Real is important. But the whole creation of Let's Get Real, our whole Zoom shirum that we have, if we only have Rabbi Kalish, there would be Kedai just for that. Dayenu. Dayenu. But without further ado, the Gematria of 129, which is speaking about today, handing the beauty of Shabbos to our children, which we know that Shabbos shows that the Abishta created the world and the Abishta Yeshman and Glebira, so I think the Gemati Rabbi Kedush is really going to like. 129 is the Gemati Hashem Hu Elikim. The more we realize Hashem Hu Elikim, the more we can connect to Shabbos, the more we can give it over properly to our children. Beautiful. Beautiful. Again, so we're going to start first with the host, Coach Menachem. I don't know what's going on. I'm very tired. What's going on? What are we doing here tonight? What's, what, what, what's going on? Tell us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Yes. Welcome, everyone, to another Shir. Baruch Hashem, with a lot of Siyata Deshmaya, we're up to 129. And we have this close to have with us, Rabbi Kalish again. And uh, the topic is an interesting one. People ask me, what are we talking about? So we're talking about Shabbos. Shabbos? Yes, there's a lot to talk about. When, when people do Kirov, one of the, the top things they do is they call them for a Shabbos Suda. Come over to experience a Shabbos. Many people would think not to my house, but you come over, come for a Shabbos, come for a Suda, and the feedback that you get, that you hear from them many times is like, wow, the family gets together, 
sit around the table, they get to talk, which is amazing. They might have it maybe once, Thanksgiving, which is also a big struggle, a challenge, but we do it every week and they're really amazed. And many of us might think when you hear that, like, what are they talking about? Why are they so excited? And us that we do it every week, we're missing something. What, what, where's the excitement? And there's a, there's a famous parable of a person wanting to climb Mount Everest. So he took a training and months and months training how to climb. And finally the day came, he started and it took weeks and all the challenges, it wasn't easy. And finally, in the middle of in the middle, he's he's about to give up, but he continues and continues, and he finally sees the peak. And he like he's almost there. He pushes himself to continue. He gets on top. He's he's there. He looks at the view, and in the middle, he realizes there's a little kid right next to him, in his coat, playing with the snow, and he's like, "Ask the kid, what are you doing here?" He looks at him, what, what do you mean what I'm doing here? I, I live here. And this is like, we sit on top of Mount Everest. We were all born, you know, FFBs, those who are from, from birth. Mm -hmm. We live on top of Mount Everest. We live with Shabbos every week. And then there are those who try to get there and they eventually manage to come and, and they see the Shabbos from the outside and like, wow. So we, we need to step back and realize where we are, what we have. And hopefully tonight we'll be able to hear a little bit more what Shabbos is. I think before we start, for even for those who look forward to Shabbos, have to ask themselves the question, what is it that they look forward to? Maybe it's, I don't have to work. Maybe I have time to sleep. Maybe it's the meat boards, the chalant and the kishka. You really have to be aware of what it is that you're looking forward to that you enjoy, maybe to socialize, maybe a kiddish, whatever it is. But tonight we'll hear a little bit deeper of what are we really looking for? What is this Shabbos? Let's start fresh, as if we don't know anything about it. So thank you, Rabbi Kaler, for being with us tonight. And Mitzvah Shem, we should have a lot of chizik for every, every one of us, for those who need it and to grow in Yiddishkeit and in Shabbos and Mitzvah Shem. Coach Menachem, beautiful. Okay, Rabbi Kedush, in a few minutes, we're going to get into it. Okay, so everybody knows tonight's topic is a beautiful topic, right? Last is the Shabbos of Doyosam, right? Handing over the beauty of Shabbos to our children. So we all could relate to this topic. This is something that I, I called Rabbi Kedush, she gave me the topic. I was like, what? But uh, I was thinking about it afterwards. It's unbelievable. So um, we got a tremendous amount of feedback. And uh, we all want the magic recipe. So again, tonight's share sponsors a lot of things happening here. First of all, Sponsored by the Muller family, Levy and Michelle Muller, in honor of Rabbi Kalish, recognition of the incredible work that he does. I have to spend time with Levy Muller, unbelievable person. Tzadik Yisraelim, love him, and um, thank you for being part of it. We have a bunch of stuff over here. First of all, Matzis Yos in the hospital is very critical. The shir should be schus for Fushleima Matzis Yochayim, then Itel or Fushleima, and then I got a few requests from Cleveland uh, about the terrible, terrible story that happened this week. So Ben Chaifetz, Ben Yomen, Rial, Ben Gershin Yeshaya, should be Elias Neshama for him, and Baruch Tav, Baruch Yosef, Yichesko, Ben Chaim, should be Schuss, Fush Lema for them. Not Fush Lema, Schuss, Ben Neshama, and uh, it's just crazy, crazy stories. Um, and uh, I'm not sure the thousands of people that are going to hear this year, hundreds of thousands, the millions of people that are going to hear this year should be a big discuss for them. And we go to the sponsor. Okay, sponsor is here with us tonight, actually. Rabbi Yochan and Palter, who I'm very close with. I'm sure we're working on a lot of big projects together. Looking forward to really uh, taking Coach Menachem to the next level, actually, to be very honest with you. So everybody, hold on to your seats. In the next few months, we're going to see some big stuff coming out. Um, Rabbi Yochan has a fresh start. I'm going to read the basics. I'll talk, and then Rabbi Yochan will take it over a few minutes. And here we go. That's basically the share. Then we're going to end after that. Okay, fresh start. Deepen your healing journey after trauma. Reclaim your life and feel whole again. Fresh start is an intensive seven-day retreat designed for men and women who want to understand, process, and heal for unresolved trauma, neglect, and abuse. Describe it to participants as life-transforming, an oasis of healing. The fresh start retreat is first of its kind in the orthodox firm Jewish world, developed under the guidance and leadership of a team of world-renowned trauma experts, licensed therapists, 
doctors and Rabbanim to combine proven treatment principles and authentic Torah values. I happen to be very involved with Yochanan. I know they're there. I happen to have been there, seen the place. And it's an unbelievable center. The Mamish saving Giddush and Hashamas. It's, it's, Rabbi Yochanan will explain you more in detail what it is. It's, it was really built together, Rabbi Yochanan, a Tova, another woman, under Rabbi Shimon Russell, who everybody knows Rabbi Shimon Russell. It's an unbelievable place. And I don't know what more to say about it because I have too much emotions about it. So Rabbi Yochanan Palter, Mr. Lifesaver, you could, you could open it up and explain what Fresh, fresh Start is. Thank you, Ushi, uh, for the kind words. And now that you told, um, let's see, 511 people that we have big plans together, I guess uh, I guess we're going to have to make that happen. That's how you do things. So, um, Rabbi Kalish, what I will say is that if the participants that have come to our program and that come to our program would have had a Rebbe or a mentor like you, they probably would not have needed our program. But unfortunately, um, much of Klal Yisrael did not have the privilege of the schus to have a, a Rebbe or a parent or a uh, safe environment that they grew up in. Our program was built out of necessity, out of passion. Um, and really, there's a large part of the population of Klal Yisrael that's walking around with a gaping hole in their heart. They may not have full-blown addictions. They might be functioning, but they're walking around the line we use as the walking dead. That uh, they're married, they have jobs, they're husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, but on the inside, there's a tremendous amount of pain. And as as Ushi said, we had this chust and really siyata deshmaya to go out and bring on some of the greatest minds in the trauma world, uh, clinical world as well as a variety of <clears throat> Rabbanim were endorsed by the Stolner Rebbe, the Biyana Rebbe, many other Rabbanim are familiar with our work, but we're really here to help people primarily over the age of 25 that are that are struggling in a very serious way with uh, severe unresolved trauma, hurt, abuse, and neglect. Um, as Ushi said, it's a seven-day program. If anybody feels that uh, it might be a fit for them or they have someone in their family or a loved one, you can reach out to us at jewishfreshstart.com. That's the name of the website, jewishfreshstart.com, or you can call us at 248-301-9997. We do a program every other week, men and women separate, only five people at a time, and we hope to uh, we hope to put ourselves out of business, to Ritz Hashem, that they're... Uh, but until then, we're here. Thank you for everything. We're gonna we have a lot of stuff to work on. We'll talk about it later. I don't wanna whatever, but I'm looking forward. Rabbi Kalish, I'm gonna read your bio. You ready? I made it up myself. You ready? Rabbi Daniel Kalish. Rabbi Daniel Kalish. If you know him, he doesn't need a bio. If you don't know him, just listen for a few minutes. That's your bio. Rabbi Kalish, what are we doing here tonight? Tell us what we're talking about tonight. First of all, thank you, Rabbi Yechanan, for your words and your plans sound very special. I want to thank Rav Asher, Coach Menachem, Rav Aaron Nayach for having me on. A lot has changed. I've been zeichet to join this year. This is my third time. And I've been zeichet over the time by all of us. A lot has changed. But one of the things that's changed by me the first time I came on as an outsider, today I'm good friends with Rav Asher. We've made Baruch Hashem a close Kesher, and we've met more than just on the screen. We've met many times in between. I'm still waiting for the Shabbos Rav Asher. I have a big Hevra here, and we publicly want to put Rav Asher on the spot. We're waiting for him to come to Durham. The Hevra is all mask him. I'll show you later the Hevra, but we're waiting for Rav Asher, but it's, it's really a schos. Rav Asher, Rabbi Menachem, you're sincere people that are doing wonderful things and teaching Torah and accessing Torah to the Rabbim in a very honest way. And I just feel honored to join both of you and appreciate, really appreciate you both a lot. I have to say as well, the Friedler family, a family that's very close and dear to me, they were the original Shadchanim. They introduced, today I know Rav Asher and we have a direct line, but the Friedler has made the Shidduch and the Friedlers are just really, really incredible people. And I want to thank the Friedler family for making this Shidduch and for all they do for me, for my family, for their family and for Klai, so really special people. 
I want to thank as well, Reb Levi Muller sponsored this. His family is a, they're the textbook. I spoke with Rosh Hashiva last night and I was talking about growth and steiging and the Iker way to steig is with the family and the Mullers are an example, father, Muller, father, mother, Mrs. Muller, the whole family is growing together. That's the main way of steiging. We're going to learn together tonight, Be'ez HaShem, a little bit. We're going to touch the sugi of Shabbos, but a family growing together is the Iker way to grow the Mishpachaisam with our families. And the Mullers are tremendous role models to me, to my family, and to all that are Zaycha to know them of growing as a family. So thank you to the Muller family for arranging this. My children are here. My son, Maishi and Manny and Eretz Yisrael stayed up late or woke up early and are here tonight in Eretz Yisrael. And I appreciate them joining this t- the tyrant learning with us. My sons, Hudi and Yaakov, are in Durham and have joined, or in Waterbury and have joined, <laughs> the the mats to learn together and I appreciate them being here. I want to thank MD Free, the Wurtentile family, tremendous family here joining to learn. So I really want to thank Yosef Casper, the whole Hevra. I Rebasha, you're a ma'aged. You bring people together. I have a close friend, Rebasha, who I haven't seen in a couple of years. I love him a lot. A.Y. Mernick and the Mernick Mishpacha from Houston, Texas. You brought us together tonight. Friends in Eretz Yisrael, Levi Perlman. I see Bainish is here. Yaakov Hillel Goodman, who just came out with the Sefer, is here. So, Rav Asher, you're a Ma'aged. I appreciate you being Ma'aged. The topic that we'll talk about tonight and primarily focus on is the topic of Shabbos Kodesh. Shabbos is something that's, it, it's, you're in bounds any time you talk about Shabbos. You never have to give an excuse. Why am I talking about Shabbos Kodesh? All year round, 365, every day of the year, you're in bounds. We have a mitzvah d'araisa so the whole year. Zachar as yayim ha-Shabbos l'kadshay. A yid is mitzvah all day, every day of the year to remember Shabbos. It happens to be we're in the weeks of Shaivavim. And the Nesiva Shalom brings from already Kadmainen, that the Iker Tafkid of Shaivivim is to work on Shabbos, is to work on Ketusha Shabbos, is to work on having more meaningful Shabbosos. Moshe Rabbeinu's first task as our leader, the first task Moshe Rabbeinu did as the leader of Kla Yisrael, the Medrash says, says, Vayar of Laisam, he saw the pain of Kla Yisrael, Says the Medrash, the first thing our Rebbe, Maisha Rabbeinu, the first thing he did is he went to Paray. And he said to Paray, if you have Avadim that work seven days a week, that have no days off, so they're going to be maced, they're going to be dead. In Evet has to retain his identity. He's a person. He's a person who serves. At the point that he has no Yoy Menucha, that he has no self, no essence, no day to reflect, no day to rest, no day to feel his essence. You don't have avad and para, you have dead people. They're all going to die. They'll die because life is not worth living if we don't know who we are. And they'll die because they don't exist if there's no self. And Maishu Rabbeinu convinced para to give one off day a week, and amazingly, Paroy acquiesced. And Paroy said, Maisha, you're right, give them a day off. And Maisha Rabbeinu got us off on Shabbos. The first act, Chazal tell us, that Maisha Rabbeinu did is he handed us Shabbos. And he handed us Shabbos as a day that we can feel we are souls. To feel our essence, we are Avdei Hashem, we're the Banim Hashem, we have an Hashem Yisera. Shabbos is to feel our essence, that we, it's true, we work all week, but we're Yidin, we're the Am Hashem, we're holy souls, and Shabbos is the opportunity to feel our Kedusha, and in that place to feel Hashem, and to experience Hashem. The Medrash goes on and says that Parai, after he granted Shabbos Kaidash, saw Klal Yisrael starting to do much better. 
Klal Yisrael started energizing. Maishu Rabbeinu lifted us up. He handed us Shabbos in his first act as our Rebbe. Says the Medrash later, Paray was geyser techpaido avoida. Make the gzeira harsher is he took away Shabbos from us. He took away Shabbos. He said on Shabbos, Yidin were studying Torah and they were learning about the Geula. On Shabbos, we feel redeemed. On Shabbos, we feel our souls. And as such, we were, we were, we were learning about Geula. We were getting unstuck on Shabbos. And Parai responded by answering Shabbos. Says the Medrash, make the Avaida harsher, take away Shabbos. So the struggle of getting, being in Mitzrayim and getting released from Mitzrayim, being stuck in a place of feeling low, malezima, a place feeling that we're just physical bodies and nothing more, the answer to Mitzrayim is Shabbos. And Paro, who wants to hold us in Mitzrayim, takes away Shabbos. So I thank Rev Asher, I thank Rev Menachem to allow us to get together and talk. And we're going to study, we're going to learn details of Shabbos, more specific in a few minutes. But I thank Rev Asher for allowing us specifically during Shaivanim. In Shaivanim, when Klal Yisrael works on Kedusha, the Malbim translates Kedusha to know we're more than bodies. We're, we have a body, you and I, beautiful, wonderful, important bodies. We should have gesund, good health, and we should appreciate our bodies. But Kedusha is the awareness that I'm a soul, you're a soul. Souls are right here, a soul. Souls. We're surrounded, we are souls, a soul. We're all souls, we're neshamas. That's what Kedusha is, the awareness that I'm more than a body. And Shabbos is Vayivarech Hashem is Yom Ashri Ve'yikadei Shai Shai. Shabbos is infused with Kedusha. It's the day a Yid recognizes I'm more than a body, I'm a soul. That's what's built into Shabbos. That's why Shabbos a Yid feels and experiences Hashem, because the soul is a chelak eloikamimal and easily connects to Hashem. It's a piece of Hashem. And Shabbos is a day that's meant that a Yid could feel Kedusha, Shaivivim, that Yidin feel Kadosh, that we rise and a nation, we get out of Mitzrayim. In the weeks of Shmois, Ve'era, Boy, Mishalach, Yisrael, Mishpatim, in those weeks there's an Indian, and the Nesiva Shalom says the main Indian during those weeks is to work on Shabbos. So thank you, Rav Asher, for allowing this. And let's, long enough, we've had a long introduction. All different people have introduced Rav Asher. Let's get to it and let's discuss handing Shabbos to our families. Yep. Rav Asher. Okay. Rabbi Kanish, thank you for the opening. Let's take a little poll from the Oilam and then we're going to go straight into a lot of questions. People are asking very strong questions. So we're going to start off slow. We're going to get there. I'm just letting the people that are texting me some uh, very strong questions, Rabbi Kanish. Okay. Very simple poll. Very basic, very simple. Are you part of a shul that makes you feel magical? You're part of a shul that makes you feel good when you go there for Shabbos. Number one, yes. Number two, no. Number three, I wish I would be. Second, second question. In your home, does Shabbos feel magical? Everything's magical. Yes, no. What does that even mean? Okay, just let the, let the oil answer. We'll get into a few questions over here. Yeah, people are texting me the answers. No, put the answers in the poll. Don't text me the answers. <laughs> okay. What about tails? Five, four, three. Okay, I'll come back. I'll come back. Take a break. <laughs> Shabbos. Go now. Come take over. Okay, let's take a break. Okay, two polls. Here's the answer. Wait. Yeah, you know, about one sec. Oh, he's calling on one sec. Yeah. 
Oh, Shim, you have to unmute if you want to talk to us. <laughs> Rabbi Kalish is here. Rabbi Kalish, you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, let's, sorry, let's, I, let's, sorry, my. We're doing Chazara. Here we go. The two questions okay, we're sharing with everybody. First question Are you part of a shul that makes you feel magical? 38% of the people say yes. 26% of the people say no. And 36% of the people say I wish. So 26 and 36 is 62% of the people basically are not part of a shul that makes them feel magical. 38% of the people are. Rabbi Kesh, want to comment anything on this, on this poll? Amazing. I do want to speak about that. I would love to comment it later on. I would like to okay. comment on this poll. The follow-up question. In your home, does Shabbos feel magical? 57% of the people say yes. 31% of the people say no. 12% of the people, what does that even mean? So basically split if Shabbos is magical or not. So keep that in mind. Okay. Well, I'm, we'll, we'll discuss the polls. I'm assuming during the share, a lot of questions that came in. And um, let's get to it, okay? Here we go. First question, Rabbi Kalish. I hear you saying that Shabbos is amazing and great. I'm not a very musical guy. I don't sing Zemiris. I try to tell a story of Amuna, some basic stuff, read something, but the kids are not interested and our Shabbos suders are not alive and vibrant. Just boring. What do I do, Rabbi Kalish? Okay, thank, thank you, Rabbi Asher. I want to, this, this is the reason for, for what we're about to discuss. I love that question. To repeat it, somebody describes they're not such a good singer. I'm not great at making the, my Shabbos table so gishmak. Maybe a, a woman could ask that I'm not the best cook in the world. So what do I do? And the poll question asks, the Shabbos magical. Let's say you ask, I don't, I'm not so, I don't have the charisma to make such a great table. I don't have a good voice. I don't tell such good jokes. My divrei Torah don't seem to connect to my family. So Rav Hush's, this question, this intelligent question is what do I do? This is the main thing that I gathered. I don't want to waste, it's a Sunday night. People have many choices and people came on to the shear. This is the main thing. The guys in my house, this is the main thing I want to say to my children, to the guys and to everybody gathered. Believe in the etzem power of Shabbos. And I want to say like this, Shabbos is a reality. When we say that Shabbos, one can experience Hashem. Let's, let's talk like this. What does it mean that Hashem is in the Beis HaMikdash? A basic to Yiddishkeit. What does it mean Hashem is in the Beis HaMikdash? Hashem's everywhere. Milay chalaretz kivaydoi. Hashem is everywhere. What do we mean Hashem is in the Beis HaMikdash? And the simple pshat is in the Beis HaMikdash is a real place that Hashem allows one to experience Hashem. It's easier to experience Hashem in the Beis HaMikdash. Shabbos, what the Beis HaMikdash is in place, Shabbos is in time. Shabbos is built that it's easier to experience Hashem. We have an easier time. Let me share a Nitziv, an incredible Nitziv. I never told my kids or the Hever this Nitziv. I never publicly said this Nitziv. The Nitziv says in Hamik Dover that Shabbos is in ice. He says that a Yid to feel holy things normally has to work. To feel a base Medrash, a base Medrash is holy. But it takes exterior things to feel a base Medrash to feel all sorts of holy things. It might be holy, but I don't feel it. Says the Nitziv, Shabbos is an ice. It's a sign. You know, like we have an ice, we have a mila on our body. An ice means that there's something in our mitzayus that feels Shabbos. You don't need any external thing to feel Shabbos. You don't need a certain song, a certain Dvar Torah, Shabbos is real by its essence. Let me tell you a story, Rav Asher. I want everybody to hear a true story. There's a Bachar I'm close to. I love this person. He's dear to me. This is a 100% true story. I'm happy, MD, I'm happy you came on to hear this Misa. Listen to a Misa. And then I'm going to bring out the point. There's a Bachar, there's a Bachar who for four months had serious Amuna questions to the point that it was holding him back from learning, from davening. He had serious emunah shaylas, 
very real person who had shyness and he was being held back by serious Amuna questions. We spoke for hours back forth and he was looking and thinking and he was stuck in a very deep place with, the, with serious Amuna questions. It came Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, I'm not Zoyche to be in Yeshiva. I'm in my shul, a beautiful place, and I was davening in my shul. This friend of mine, this holy Bachar, was in Yeshiva Yom Kippur. He's holy, so he wasn't going to eat Yom Kippur. He wasn't going to do Malacha Yom Kippur. But to pray, he, he had questions. He didn't know if he was going to pray. He wakes up 2 o'clock Yom Kippur afternoon. He's a tzaddik. He slept because he didn't want to eat. He slept because he didn't want to do malacha. Two o'clock, he wakes up. He goes to the shul. He had zero plan to do anything Yom Kippur. He's just going to do what he, not eat and not do malacha. He comes to shul Yom Kippur and he prays. He figures, let me say Shman Esrei. So he says Shman Esrei. He davens up Shman Esrei. He gets to the Hashem news where you're supposed to bang and ask Hashem forgiveness and he can't do it. He says to himself, just clap, bang, Hashem nu bagad nu, nu go. You daven the whole, the whole davening till now. Tam shechala, go weiter. And he can't. He's stuck. He can't say Hashem nu. The man is stuck. He starts thinking, what's wrong with me? Why can't I, why can't I do it? He starts thinking. And he starts crying like a baby. And he says, Hashem, I understand. I understand, Hashem, that you hide. Because that's the challenge of life to find you, Hashem. And if you were so open, we wouldn't have an Isaiah and I get the world of challenge. But you hide from me unfairly, Hashem. It's imbalance. You push me away. And he starts going through his life. I feel pushed away from Hashem. And he starts describing his difficulties of a life. He's bawling. And he's saying, Hashem, you push me away. And you want me to apologize? I'm supposed to say, I'm sorry, I'm so upset. And here I'm supposed to come to shul and say, I'm sorry, I'm upset. I feel rejected, pushed away. And I don't, you want me to start apologizing? I don't feel that way. And you don't want me to pretend Hashem. And I'm so upset. And he starts speaking to Hashem is Tainas. After a long, long time of saying Hashem is Tainas, he says, but I have to admit Hashem, I want to be an honest person. I've pushed you away. I've made mistakes and pushed you out of my life. Hashemnu, Bogadnu. And he starts saying the Hashemnus, Bechiyos. Hours lady, there's a Rebbe, there's a Rebbe on this Shia right now. Hours later, it's Mayriv time. He said to a Rebbe who's on the Shia that I have Allah Shaila, I can't have in Mayriv yet. I'm talking to God. I'm engaged in a serious conversation. I'm not ready for Mayriv. What should I do? The Rebbe said, keep going, keep going, keep talking. The guy, I'm telling you today, it's months later. This is Yom Kippur. We've had Rek Tishrei, Cheshvin, Kislev, and now Shvat. We're holding by Shvat already. The guy is a different human being. I ask you, what happened? What happened? He didn't hear a, a certain tune of the Chazen. He didn't hear the Tzibur sing. You know what happened? Yom Kippur happened. Yom Kippur is a Metziyos Lufnei Hashem. I want to say, Rabbi Isai, Shabbos is a Metziyos. Let me tell you a story of Rabbi Yaisi ben Kisma. Rabbi Yaisi ben Kisma, this Yaisi ben Kisma, the Medrash says, was a wayward Jew. He was a Jew who was rebellious. The Romans said any Yid can go in the base Hamigdash and take a keli, take a utensil, the base Mishnah, and we'll give it to you. And this rebellious Jew went into the base Hamigdash, grabbed the Menorah, and ran out. So you hear what a bad person would talk? He's a Russia. He ran out with the Menorah from the Beis Hamikdash. You don't, you and I don't know somebody so bad. He ran out with the Menorah from the Beis Hamikdash. He was willing to run away with the Menorah. Comes the Romans and they take the Menorah from him. They tell him we're not letting you keep the Menorah. 
They said, but go in and take a different Kaylee. He said, Oily, Vaili, woe unto me, Shechasti Liberi Pamachas. I angered my creator once. I will not anger him anymore. I'm not going back in. The Romans wanted the year to anger Hashem. They said, we'll give you the taxes for a year. I won't go in. Two years, millions, tens of millions. I won't go in. Three years, billions of dollars. I'm not going in. The Romans killed him. He was Nifter al Kiddush Hashem. Ask the Panavich Rav, what changed? A minute ago, the guy is a Russia. He stole the Menayur from the base Hamigdash. A few minutes later, he died. He was Nifter al Kiddush Hashem. I'm not angering my creator. What changed? Says the Panavich Rav, he walked into the Beis Hamikdash. The Mikdash is real. A Bachar told me because he held the Menorah. And when they wanted to take away the Menorah, he didn't want to part with the Menorah. But the Panavich Rav said because he walked into the Beis Hamikdash. Maybe the Bachar's Pshat says good because he held the Menorah and didn't want to let go of the Menorah. And since he walked into the Mikdash, he changed. And he went from a Russia to a Tzadik, because the Mikdash is a place to play Hashem. What I want to say in the main point that I wanted to gather everybody tonight is to believe in Shabbos. People think they have a pressure to dress up Shabbos. I have to sing a certain song as if, let's say you have Kirov people over, let alone our children. So how do I give them Shabbos? Is it a certain flavor you filled the fish? Is it a certain song in Yeshiva by us, Rabbi say? Um, and it's, it's, it's a charged question. And I'm talking lengthy about it. And we've gathered from across the world. And my kids are up in the middle of the night for this. I look at Bachram and I want to hand the guy Shabbos. Shabbos, our precious Shabbos. And we want to hand it to our kids. I see Bachram who are struggling with Shabbos. And I want to give them Shabbos. Please, everybody understand this. Believe in the thing itself. The Zmiris are not what you're selling. We sing because it's Shabbos. It's not Shabbos because we sing. The question was asked, the intelligent question, is sure magical for you? Of course, you should find a minion that sings beautifully. And that as a van kite, and because Shab- because that's most in sync with Shabbos. But Shabbos needs no help. Shabbos is a day that a yid can access. I am a soul. It's a truth. You're a soul and I'm a soul. And we have an Ashama Yaseira and we can feel it more. There's a Kayach to Shabbos. I've seen this. That Bachar changed on Yom Kippur. For four months we were working. I had this thought, that plan. I tried every trick in my arsenal. I love the guy. I didn't succeed. You know what succeeded? Yom Kippur succeeded. Because Yom Kippur is Lufnei Hashem. It's a truth. It's not a certain song, a certain chazin, a certain note. Yom Kippur is a fact. It's a reality that one can experience Hashem on Yom Kippur. That Bachar created and formed the relationship. When you are sitting Yom Kippur yourself, it, it's good to have a beautiful chazan, find a great one. It's good to have touching songs and all the things that inspire you. But know there's a fact called Yom Kippur, Lufnei Hashem. Shabbos, I want everybody will take off pressures. At your Shabbos table, at my Shabbos table, we feel like this pressure in Yeshiva. We sing for hours. And we have Divrei Taira, but I want you to know it's without any pressure. It's not the Divrei Taira. It's not the singing. It's there's a Mitzayus called Shabbos. Shabbos is a day that a person can access who he is, who she is, we're souls. Holy, holy souls that are Shaykh to Ketusha, that are Shaykh to shine and do precious and important things. And most importantly, our shayach to connect our creator to God. That is Shabbos Kiddush. Reb Pink is said like this, right before Kiddush, we sing Shalom Aleichem. Reb Ezi is makbid in Yeshiva, that we sing Shalom Aleichem. He's right. After we greet the angels, we say, Tzayischem l'shalom, goodbye. 
What are we being so cruel for? These are like beautiful families, our aunts, really Rosenberg's here. Who would kick out the guests? Before you start Kiddush, you're like, say, Shem L'Shalom, bye, angels. What are you kicking out the angels, Akiva? The angels just came. You say, say, Shem L'Shalom, Ruven Yoyna. So Repinkus, who was known for his tremendous love of Shabbos more than anything, and wrote a beautiful sefer about Shabbos, said, why do we kick out the angels? Say, Shem L'Shalom. And he quoted, Reb Pincus quoted, the Pasuk says on Yom Kippur. We're talking about Yom Kippur, and the Pasuk says concerning Yom Kippur. Says Reb Pincus, the Pasuk says, says any person, I wrote down the Pasuk, I want to read it to you. Says no person's allowed to be in the base Hamikdash with the Kayan God on Yom Kippur. Says the Yerushalmi, including angels. Yerushalmi says that angels are not allowed in the Kaidish Kadashim. It's the Holy of Holies. A Yid is with Hashem, angels. The Yerushalmi says are not allowed in the Kaidish Kadashim when the Malach, when the Kayan Gadol's there. Said Reb Pinkus, a Yid's making Kiddush is Lefnai Lefnim. A Yid is making Kiddush, Kedusha. He's announcing Hashem's the creator. It's my favorite moment of the week. My precious family around this dining room table, the Kiddush is the f- best moment of the week. Says Repinkus, we say, I love you, angel. Thank you for bringing me home. We welcomed him, we blessed him, and we're appreciative of all the angels. But now I'm going to make Kiddush. Say Yitzchem L'Shalom. Hatzlach, angel, you can't be here. A Yid's making Kiddush, said Reb Pinkus, is on a higher madrega than an angel. Because he's bringing Kiddusha to this earth. And an angel can't bring Kiddusha. You and I, as humans, with human frailty and struggle and difficulty, we can bring Hashem here. We can connect Hashem here with our taivas and our failings and our fallings and our difficulties. We can serve Hashem, and we make Kiddush, and we say to the angels, said Reb Pinkus, say Yitzchem L'Shalom, sorry, I'm making Kiddush right now. So I want to say to everybody here, and this will help an answer of Asha's question, it's a long answer, but it's why I gathered the Hevra tonight. Please believe in the Etzem thing called Shabbos. The Beis Hamikdash had a power be'etzem and changed Yosef ben Kisma. He went from a Russia to a Tzaddik Amr, to a holy of holy yids. Yet this Bachar on Yom Kippur, without any technique, he didn't need this trick, that trick, some smart mechanics trick. This Bachar felt Yom Kippur, he felt Hashem, because Yom Kippur is Lutnei Hashem. He's different months later. He's beautiful. I visited him. He went, flew to back to Eretz Yisrael. He's steiging Naira. He hasn't had his questions, because he met Hashem, and they spoke, and it's lasted, because Lutnei Hashem. I want to say in Yeshiva, we have beautiful Shabbosos, but the pressure is not on the Zmiris. The pressure serve kogel and wonderful dishes for Shabbos. But no, if somebody says, I'm not such a good singer, I don't have such charisma. It's very sad if we think what's working is our song. The songs we sing about Hashem, I have, I, I bear, my son sing beautifully. My voice is very challenged. But the songs we sing are because of the etzem power of the day. So we sing Kari Bain, we sing songs of tremendous closeness to Hashem, of great kisufim, of great longing for Hashem, you did nefesh. All these songs that express our longing and our attachment to Hashem, it's built into the day. I promise everybody here that if you feel less pressure, you'll do a better job. Your song is not the thing that's going to capture your children. If you feel with your family, I have to hand them Shabbos. So you say, do I sing Gishmak enough? I have, I have no, I've never been accused of being Shloim Maguri. 
So his home, his mirror, and Kedai, and I try to have Shabbos with him whenever I can. I'm no Yosef Casper, and I try to have Shabbos, and he should come more often. I like when he comes. But even you, even if we struggle, Rev Asher, to sing, anybody who struggles to sing, or struggles to run a Gishmak Suda, the pressure is not on you. Believe in the power called Shabbos. Tap into it yourself. By the way, don't crush it. You don't have to do crazy things in yeshiva by us. I could say, here's a youngster struggling. What do I have to do to make it more geschmack? That's not the vert. I want a kid. I have watched the 10th grader who comes to the dining room. Shabbos, the main thing is to love the next person, hug. That itself is Shabbos because I know who I am and I know who you are on Shabbos. Shabbos, we give brachas. It says that Chassid Yayv, it says all Yid Mamivarach each other, not just the parents to their children. A bracha means I chap who you are. We'll Mivarach each other. You beautiful Yid, you should be gebenched. I good in Shabbos. You beautiful Yid. The best thing in Yeshiva, 10th grader comes in, take a filter fish and soup, and he gets a hug. I remembered who I am. The dorm counts, Aryeh Barnett knows who he is, and he hugs a bacher because he knows who he is. And I've watched it, Shabbos works. It takes off the pressure, Rabbi say, because it's important to know this. We gathered here tonight, the Shamru Bnei so keep Shabbos, last Shabbos, Shabbos, what should I do? Do I make a cool enough Shabbos? And you should have magical Shabbos. Serve delightful food and sing Zmiris, Hebra. Tell good jokes at your table. Make chaos, lebedic. But it's not what is Shabbos. That is all there because we appreciate Shabbos. Shabbos is a spiritual force. It's like the Beis Hamikdash. It just is true. On Shabbos, a yid can feel his own soul, Nisham Yishserah, like we said in Itziv. We can feel our own holiness and we could see holiness in another Yid. A Yid looks different on Shabbos. A Yid looks different, literally looks different on Shabbos. I'm gonna tell you, Rav Asher, Tikkun Zayar. I'm not one well-versed in Kabbalah, but this tonight, tonight's different. I feel a fire, Rav Asher, from you and Rav Menachem. In Tikkun Zayar, I never told my kids this once in my life. Listen to this MD, listen Binyamin Ben Salmon. Shabbos is the same Isis as Boishas. Embarrassment. And what's Shat? Shabbos and Busha. The Iker Nisai in Rav Shlaim Kramer of today is people feel shame. They feel I'm puzzle. I've seen, I've been exposed, I'm puzzle. They feel Boishas. And the opposite, when you, you know what turns Boishas inside out? Shabbos. It's the Kune Zayar. Shabbos. Changes Boishas. It ends Busha. Somebody feels, Mivoyish, I'm such a body. I made so many mistakes. It's the challenge of our generation, shame. You know what answers our generation, shame? You know what changes the deal? You know what ends the Boishas? Shabbos. You flip it around, Shabbos. So I say to all of us, it takes off the pressures practically to your question, Rav Asher that many of us feel, I don't have the best way. So first of all, go to Shloy Maguri's house or invite him to yours. Bring over Binyam and Bree. The Sadi will have good voices. So I'm not against that. But I say, invite you to Lerfeld. You'll, you'll have a gorgeous voice there. But I say to everybody that it takes off the pressure. And you can, even if you try too hard, if you're making a Shabbos for your family and you think the pressure's on you, it's actually a Gerayan. It's, it's worse. You, you crush Shabbos. In Yeshiva, my job is I don't want to crush Shabbos. Let Shabbos. I actually make too many programs. We have singing for hours, but I want to say that I'm not trying to crush Shabbos. I'm just trying to plug in myself. So we sing and we dance and we celebrate. The trick is not the dancing and the singing. If you think that's the trick, you yourself are not letting Shabbos do it. Shabbos by itself is a force. It's a day of holiness. It's a day we feel ourselves. People feel something different, experience the Nisham Yishayra. It's an ice. And on that day, we could feel our holiness 
connect to Hashem, it's in the day, without tricks. So sing, enjoy the gefilte fish and the kugel, and you take off the pressure of your voice. I croak weekly and my kids jump in and love it. It's not my voice, it's the secret spice called Shabbos. So it takes off the pressure, I don't have the best voice. People even say there's stresses around the table. Believe in Shabbos, Rabbi Yisrael. I ask everybody, if you believe in Shabbos, it will unleash the force called Shabbos. If you don't believe in Shabbos, you're worried about your voice and your kogel and maybe some other tensions. If you believe in Shabbos, it will unleash the force of Shabbos. That's how it works. So that's what I want to say to every single person here. I, I, I answered very long, Rev Asher. So I ask always, when I speak too long, Rev, Rev Josh Wurtent, I listened for so long, Ezra Bork, I'm going to pay up with two Shabbos songs. We have more things to discuss, but I want to pay up. Without, we're gonna, I'm going to ask two Bachrama here. We're going to sing two Shabbos songs, Hevra, and then we'll continue with questions. But I spoke so long, the Knas on me, is I'm going off, we're going to hear two Shabbos songs from Shlomo and Arya Yikon. Introduce yourself. Please introduce yourself. Well, I want to ask them some questions about Shabbos. How did how they tap into it with Rabbi Kedosh? How do you, when you're with Rabbi Kedosh, how do you tap into Shabbos? Explain it, because I want to know, because I'm coming for Shabbos. <laughs> Get on the Zoom. <laughs> Rav Asher, you'll hear them both sing. You'll hear that they're tapped in. <laughs> this is Shlomo Guri, is to the right, is going to sing. Aryeh Barnett. I'm asking them both to sing with the island. I thought the boy on the right is Tati Maikin. Isn't he Tati Maikin? Well, one more time, buddy. Say, buddy. Say, what? The guy on the right is Tati my king, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, busted. I was saying his first name, Ravasha, that's his middle name. Okay, let's go. Take it away. Maestro. Thank you.
was gorgeous. Binyamin, Arye, and Shlomo. That was gorgeous. I want to thank my mother is on, my Hei Lugamama, Imi Mayrasi is on here. And my mother handed me Shabbos, my parents, who encourage us to sing, who never noticed to encourage. I always thought I had a good voice because of my parents. And I, I say to us, bring everything you got on Shabbos. And it took off the pressure. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask them to sing other Shabbos songs. Shlomo, come. I feel that talking. Usher, do you mind, Usher? Before another question, can they sing another Shabbos song? Rabbi Kalish is up to you. I'm letting you know. Everybody on the shear, the, the shear didn't start yet. The questions that are coming in, it's up to you. I maybe maybe break it up, but the questions are coming in strong. So it's up to you, Rabbi Kalish. You're in charge. My mama loves Zmira Shabbos, and I was talking about Shabbos as a Metzius of Hashem, of in front of Hashem, and the comparison Shabbos and Beis Hamikdash. MD, let's have Shloima and Arye. We miss Chaim. Chaim was an Eretz Yisrael, but if they could sing Lemikta Sheikh Tov, if Binyamin will join also, let's sing Lemikta Sheikh Tov, and then we'll continue with questions. Okay. You know something, for every song they sing, they have to answer one question. That's the deal. Sure, I, that's fair. Okay. Let's go.
the boys. We have a deal. Let's go back. Oh, back, back. He has a Shiloh. Mm-hmm. Vashir sure has a Shiloh. Yeah. First, first, not to my king answer this question. You ready? Please describe to me in words what does it mean to have a Rebbe like Rabbi Kalish as your Rebbe? What does it mean to you? That's a good question. <laughs> um, it means a lot. Well, what, better yet, before what? Rabbi Kalish and after Rabbi Kalish. What is that? I didn't get Before you had Rabbi Kalish in your life and now that you have Rabbi Kalish in life, what's the contrast? That's a, that's a, yeah. Think, take your time. I want to hear. I know that there's a lot of feelings, that's for sure, and a lot. It, it let it out. Let it out. In a lot of ways. Um, if I were to quickly answer this question, um, there was definitely like a lot of like feelings I've had inside inside my heart that I've always felt that I've like wanted to connect, you know, to to Yiddishkeit, to, to to anything, and coming coming to the yeshiva, getting to meet Rabbi Kalish, um, I felt like I was able to 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 see that I'm able to tap into that for real, you know, so. That's before I, I was, I, I wanted it. Now I see that I'm able to, and I have been trying to. So it's a big thing, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, now the guy, the guy to your left. Tap in my cake. Nice to meet you, R.A.A. Barnett. Usher Barnett. Tell me, tell me what Rabbi Kalish did for you before and after. We want to understand for all the people that are looking for a bay and people to connect to. One more now, time. What did Rabbi Kalish, what does Rabbi Kalish bring out in you that before you knew Rabbi Kalish and now that you know him, what did he bring out in you? I think part of meeting someone that has eyesight like that, that can see through things that people might not be able to see through, he gets to see your neshama like he talks about with a soul. You spend enough time with him, you start to see yourself that way. Beautiful. Okay, you ready for the tough questions? Now we're getting warmed up. Okay, let me speak to Rabbi Kalish. <laughs> hey, Rabbi Kalish, now that everyone wants to know when's the show going to start, here we go. <laughs> Okay, Rabbi Kalish, first live question, you're on. Okay. Thank you, Rabbi Kalish. I'm always very inspired by you. My question is as follows. Um, it's a tough one. Um, unfortunately, my husband drinks at the Shabbos Kiddush every week and comes home drunk. And our Shabbos table is basically a circus. Um, he gets angry, gets aggressive, fights with everyone. Um, came to a point where my kids say that Shabbos is the hardest day of the week, the worst day of the week. They hate Shabbos. And unfortunately, my oldest child from the trauma left the house and is currently not Shomer Shabbos. Um, I'm trying my best to make my home, my Shabbos especially, a happy place, yet um, I'm obviously having a hard time. We have a rub involved, we have a therapist involved. To no avail. What can I do to save the rest of my children and bring Shabbos as a time of simcha? Wow! 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 Yeah. Before, before there's before any answer, you sound like an incredible person. And the first thing is just to feel the tsar of such a journey. That's like the first, second, third, fourth. Yeah, the tsar of the journey. Your tsar. Your your children's sad, your children's father's sad, the tsar of everybody involved is like the first thing to feel. It's hard in a live question and answer to just like give an answer. The first thing's like a prayer. Would I really, if, if Ezzy wasn't here, I probably would sing, would pray with everybody here. I would sing Hashem Ali Rachman Rachem Aloy and pray with you because it, the tsar is real. The tsar is real and it's, it's very, very difficult what you're saying. I, there's many, there's many points that I think I, that I think I'd like to say, I want to say, and I, I feel a bit reiterating that first point, but I feel always before you go weiter to strengthen the first point. And I want to say that Yidin are amazing and resilient. Many people have gone through a lot and I've met many people who have gone through incredible amounts. And the fact that we're souls and big people is not changed. Know that in your children, know that even in yourself, that we're special and big people that's unchanged with all the difficulties. I want to tell you a story. There's a guy in my house now at Sadik Nachum Wolf. He's one of, really one of the special people I know. 
And in yeshiva, Yehuda's cheering everybody from Waterbury. He's like fired up. He's somebody who's helped many people out. Nachum, it's a true story. He's sitting right here. Nachum Wolf knocked on my door about three, four in the morning, Nachum. About four in the morning with the Bachar who was going through a lot and having difficult, Nachum brought him to my house. They knocked on my door four in the morning, Friday morning. Nachum was with this Bachar and he needed assistance in the middle of the night, Friday night, four in the morning. And Nachum the Tzaddik was with him till four in the morning and then felt that more assistance was necessary. Maybe somebody older, so he brought him to my house. And this Bachar was struggling with a lot. And we went on a walk from four in the morning till seven in the morning. And the Bachar started telling me about his life. He had a very difficult life. Very. Things you're describing of the sort that you're describing. And then he told me that he has a notebook and he showed me a notebook where he has letters to God that he wrote letters to Hashem. 16 year old boy wrote a notebook full of letters to Hashem, discussions he's had with Hashem, and he wrote letters to Hashem. I was like wildly blown away by this soul with everything he went through and made not despite, maybe not even despite, maybe because of what he went through, he's more attuned, he's a precious soul. I told this Bachar that I'll make a deal with you. I said, I think that you have health things to learn and I'll work on you being healthy if you work on me being from. If you work that you get Dan Kalish to have the Muna that you have. And Muna's everywhere. Your children, I say to you, and you certainly have a Muna. Anybody can hear that. Your children have a Muna. Please know that even they're struggling with Shabbos. And they need to stop associating the physical Shabbos. They're associating Chalant with difficult times. But Shabbos is untainted and your children are untainted. And the two will yet meet. Believe in your children and believe in Shabbos. And I say to you, the biggest thing you could do for your kids is keep believing in self, believe in your own specialness, believe in your own specialness. Don't get down on yourself. We could start getting down on our choices, who we married, who we this, who we that. Don't get down on yourself. Believe in yourself and your own holiness. That's what Shabbos is. That's what Shabbos is. I want to tell you another story that it was during, I love Shalashodas. The Hevra could describe you did nefesh otherworldly. We sang you did nefesh. We sang you did nefesh holy. Then Rai Shapiro Shlita speaks. It's, we're all on, a, then a, a dorm counselor runs into the dining room and motions that it's an emergency, I have to run out. So I had to leave precious Shalashodas, two Bachram in the dorm, we're trying to figure out how to get along. So I ran to the dorm. And I want to say that here I left Shalashudas. And I wanted to bring them, you did nefesh. So I hugged each one. I saw who they were. I just say, you did nefesh. Hashem, you're a friend. You did means a friend. A friend of my soul. I felt my nefesh. And I feel Hashem is, you did nefesh as a friend of mine. And then I hugged two souls who were also friends of Hashem. And I hugged them with, with Shalashudas. The room became special. And I say to you that continue to believe in yourself and believe in your kids. That is Shabbos. That's not a side point to Shabbos. They will yet touch and feel Shabbos. Shabbos can't be ruined. And your children can't be ruined. That's what I say to you. Please know nobody can touch Shabbos because it's real. Somebody can taint the kogel of Shabbos. They can even taint the Shabbos table, but they can't taint Shabbos. Your children and Shabbos both can't be touched and your children are souls. Your children are going to yet say, Aloikai, Neshama Shenesata B'Tayrahi. I say practically, I, I, if, if it doesn't sound practical, please trust me, it is. Believe in yourself, your soul, and believe in your children's souls. See their preciousness, no matter what their externals are. 
and then continue to believe in Shabbos. I have seen people who struggled with Shabbos because the external of Shabbos was hurt by a home of chaos. But please trust me, I know some people who have madragas of Shabbos. I have watched Bachim who have Shabbos that is tantalizing their thoughts on Shabbos. And Shabbos could have appeared to have been ruined. It was only the external shell. Your children are not ruined and Shabbos is not ruined. Continue to trust in both. That's my message to you. Okay, next question, you're on. Hi, thank you for taking my question. So Shabbos in our home is very loved. Everybody loves Shabbos. We make it very light, um, excitement, togetherness. But for some reason, Shabbos morning, it seems very, very difficult to get our kids to join us at the Shabbos meal. We stop telling them every Torah and we don't tell them you have to daven and we don't force anything on them and yet they just don't seem to be interested. I'd love to hear some advice. Somebody texted, let's get practical. <laughs> Whenever I want to say, I want to say to that, first of all, Ashrecha, Ashrechem, that Shabbos in your home is precious and delightful. I want to say on the practical that I want to speak practically, but I like Shear and Klolem rules. It's not just Klolem, it's, it's Pratim also, but I like sharing the Yisait Advarim that each of us then can bring to our own situation. So we've only been practical till here. But I want to say on, on, that, on that question about Shabbos Day that again that because we believe in shabbos and we believe in our children they'll yet come to the whole thing sometimes we have a child that sleeps late i have seen guys that sleep late that it helps them keep the whole shabbos now i want them to keep awake and enjoy every precious moment of shabbos it's a difficult messiah for youngsters to get up I say what I would do is make, I would say that for you, yourself, and your husband, plug into Shabbos then, and make sure that Shabbos is delightful then. And when you greet your child, whenever they come with that greeting of good Shabbos, they're being greeted by somebody who has felt the entirety of Shabbos. I want to say in an honest way, in yeshiva, I want every bacher to be at every aspect of Shabbos. Those guys weren't at Shalashudis, but I, after you did Nefesh, I went there and gave them a hug when you did Nefesh, because I sang it. I want to say to you, when your kid gets up at two and comes in, you have sat and sang Yaimza Mechubad. You were at a table that sang Yaimza Mechubad. Hug your child with that. I mean it sincerely. I can't say it more practically. I mean practically. You're at the Shabbos table, and people who ask this, my spouse is doing this, my kids are doing this. You plug into Shabbos and then interact with people in a Shabbos sticker eifen. You, what does it mean you plugged into Shabbos? You know who you are. You said you did nefesh. And then with what you've discovered, greet your children. So my answer is if your kids sleep late, it's painful. But you were up. You were at the davening, the tata. Greet your kids, the greeting of somebody who was at davening Shabbos. I mean it. I mean it, and you'll see it will work. It won't be long before they're the ones up and greeting the next one. In yeshiva, there's a natural tendency. I care about all the guys. We care about all the guys. So Rai Brownstein can look around yeshiva. He cares about every bacher in yeshiva. And he could say at the Sudas, this 150, but this one's not there. But the answer is the 150 will go to the dorm and they're going to give him a good shot with somebody who was there. That, that has power. That has power. So that's what I say to you. I say to you, don't force your kids to get there. I say when they get up, give them a hug of somebody who's been, in, who's been plugged into Shabbos since 7.30, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. And then when they get that hug at two from somebody plugged in, it's a different hug. It's a different thing. 
because we, we plugged into Shabbos to a precious, precious day. It's a different type of hug. It's totally a different hug. That's, that's what I say to that question. Okay, because let's get into this question. Um, my son's a 15-year-old boy in yeshiva. He's, he's doing well in yeshiva, but when it comes to Shemir Shabbos with a cell phone, we know that he's using it behind closed doors. What should I do? What can I do? What do I say to him? And Rabbi Kedush, as you know, this is very common. I mean, I know a lot of stories, you know, people that are, when it comes to the Shemir Shabbos, especially with the cell phone, the connection is, especially in the younger people, it just seems like they can't, they can't disconnect from it. I want to say something clearly to everybody here, that there are many questions and styles of how to respond when my kid, the person's kid is doing a maiseloi taiv. And, and I'm not here, they're all different styles. There's something I have to share, and this is practical. I don't mean this as cute, as very from. I beg everybody here, continue to see your kid as a soul. I promise that's practical. This is not, it's just the truth. I'm a neshama right here. I have a body also, but I'm a neshama. I have neshama surround right here. I'm Zoich and my wife and I, Hashem handed us six souls and put them with beautiful bodies, Baruch Hashem. Continue to see your child as precious. They will become what you see. I'll tell you a maizir of Asher. I was at an event, the Talmidim of Rabbi Noach Weinberg made an event. And they made a beautiful event. And one Talmud got up. It was after Rabbi Noach Weinberg was nifter. And they made a gorgeous event. And there were many of his Talmidim there. And one Talmud wistfully said, Ah, I wish Rebbe was here. I wish Rebbe saw this. Ah. It was like a tsar for him. I wish Rebbe saw us and saw this Maimed. Another Talmud got up afterwards and he said on shoulder cover, Rebbe saw it, that's why it's here. Rebbe saw this was coming, that's why it's here. Rebbe did see it. Not, he sees it now also, but he saw it, that's why it's here. I say to all the parents, don't lose focus who your kid is. And he's a big soul, big time. And often, Reb Tzaddik says it, the more he struggles, the bigger he is. Don't lose focus who he is. That's what I say. The main message, I saw my kid, I know in his room what he does. Don't lose, you might know your kid better not knowing what he does. And I'm not, there are ways and other answers and ways to address, but they all have to factor this in, that you know who he is, you know his soul. I have seen mothers whose kids are holy. There are people on the, on the Shia right now who are holy because the mother refused to stop seeing the holy. It's, it's difficult. When somebody sees you so holy, it's difficult. I want to tell you, Rabbi Say. This Shabbos, we were zeichet to have Rav Fisher Shlita in the yeshiva for Shabbos. It was electric. The guys took to him, it was fire. Now he's a good speaker, a wonderful speaker, and he gave beautiful shiurim. Leil Shabbos, Shabbos day. You know the main thing he brought? He sees souls, he has beautiful eyes. He sees precious people. He's intimidated by people, real. He's nishtaimim, he's amazed, he sees, he's not distracted by silliness. I say to everybody here, you know your child and the preciousness. Don't let go of what you know. Many a mother has saved her kid. Davin HaMelech gave credit to his mama. Ani avdecha ben ha You know why I'm in Eber Hashem ben ha Because my mother was, an, was a tremendous servant of Hashem. And I say the main answer, to, the main answer, and there are other things to do, and each one will have their style, and I say, do with your intelligence. But I say, don't lose sight, you know that it's a precious soul. That's a soul, that's a truth. That's not a trick. It's a truth, not a trick. We're all hailing in the Shamas, big time people. And the ones that struggle, Reb Tzaddik says, often are bigger souls. Don't lose sight of what they are. I beg you, it's practical. And I know how challenging it is. What is Emunah? 
When things are going well, somebody's a maimon by Hashem, but of course they see bracha. It means even if Hashem hides, God, I see you. So emun in our children is even when things look different, I'm not letting go of what I know you are because it's true. Because it's true, it's not a trick. Tricks don't work. Our kids could be on this Zoom, tell them this because it's true. Just see what they are and don't lose focus of what they are. It's challenging. Whenever there's Hester, when Hashem hides, but Hashem is still there, he's there the same, by the way, the lights are just out. When the lights go off, Hashem is just as much there. It's just no lights on. Our children, Emun and our children, they have an Ishama. They have an Ishama. Chelek, Elikai, Mimal, Apostak, and Eoiv. Mamish, literal. They're, they have a chalik of Hashem. And understand that they're powerfully precious. Don't lose that view. I beg everybody. I know it's challenging with my son, my daughter. You should see how she looks. You should see how she dresses. You should see her behaviors. Don't get fooled by that. You raised that precious soul. You were there. That beautiful child was born. Say it. Don't stop looking at it. The best thing we can give our children, the main thing is that we see the beauty and we're not letting go of that. Our kids will be very mad at you for that. It's probably the harshest thing. If you want to be a harsh parent, see your kid's preciousness. I mean it. You, a parent gets angry. I say you're a softie. You even yell at them, you're a softie. You think screaming is a softie. You think screaming's tough. Screaming's a softie because you stop seeing who they are. And the more you scream, the softer you are. You want to be harsh? See their soul. Now you're a harsh person. It costs times it. That's very expensive. You want to be a harsh disciplinarian. See the precious soul. That's harsh. Okay, I'm about to go live. Okay. And that's what I want to say. I want to sing a song, Hevra. Usher. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. One second, Rebecca. One more, one more question. One more question. One more question. You're on because I unmuted them early. Rebecca Kalish, thank you so much. I appreciate every single share that I've heard from you. Um, I, I've actually heard a share a couple of months ago um, where you discussed Shabbos, and I really related very much, <coughs> especially to the way that you described how you um, how you feel during Kiddush, and we really relate. Uh, my husband, you know, you're describing a few minutes ago about the singing and the cooking and Baruch Hashem. I happened to take Shabbos in 40 minutes before. We have a very relaxed Friday. My husband has a beautiful voice. He composes. It, the food is amazing. My kids have a special. Can, 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 can we come to Shabbos also? Can we also come to Shabbos? Yeah, Shabbos absolutely. Okay, so Rabbi Kalish and then, okay. Send me your address, we'll come. We would love to. We would love to. So anyway, there is a special Yitzhahara during the Shabbos Sudos for our children to fight like Mishuganas, like beyond Mishuganas. I, I know that it's a special Yitzhahara. I know this is, maybe this is a parenting question more than a, more than a Shabbos question, but um, to ignore them completely, like there's literally abuse going on in, in the next room. Um, Baruch Hashem, you know, we have one child who does stay by Asuda, actually a struggling 16-year-old, and who she, she loves it. She stays for hours. Um, we, we sing. It's beautiful. But we have our younger children, 13 and down, who are literally, they will, they'll come for Kiddush. They'll leave right away. They hardly eat. They're not interested. Is there any ethos or anything? I would, I would, what I would say, first of all, Ashrechem, that you have such a Shabbos at home, Ashrechem, you're, you're correct to bring a beautiful and to put so much and invest into Shabbos. I would, what I would say very, um, what I would say very much, and what I would ask that is done is Shabbos is, Shabbos is a day, Shabbos says something, and Shabbos says that I have a soul, it teaches me I have a soul, it teaches me to see it in others, and it allows me to connect to Hashem because that's the place where we naturally connect to Hashem. I would say that in dealing with our kids with patience, that's the most Shabbos you can bring to your kids. You're, if you go in and break up the fight in a nice way, you're shouting Shabbos Kaidish. You're, you're an embodiment of Shabbos. I would say to go to the next room, and it's not, we don't break up a fight Shabbos like we do it during the week. During the week, we forget who we are. We become more physical. 
We forget about our own midas taiva, savlanas, our godly aspect. So we break up a fight during the week. There's a little less patience. You can break up a fight in a Shabbosika manner. And I say, go to the next room. And 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 when I left that Shalashudis to teach two people how to get along better, I wanted to do it with a, 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 a chiyos of Shabbos. All our activities on Shabbos could be different. So I say more patience in working. It's true. Kids during a soda, they're, they're struggling with, they're struggling to get along and things like that. There's for sure challenges like that. There's a Shabbos thick way of even interacting with our kids. It means we see who they are. So I say more savlanas, more, and they'll see that on Shabbos, you're just different. All the greats were different on Shabbos, acted in every way. Revolba says that on Shabbos, he didn't recognize his Rebbe physically. So, so I say on that, break up the fight and the Shabbos stick away, which means much more each one gets a hug and the kiss. During Shabbos, it might be a little more harsh. Shabbos is more warm to break up. I say break up the fights and the Shabbos stick away. We're all human, but Shabbos we get in the Shami Yaseir. We, we become holier. We're less physical. The physical part is so frustrated and hard when kids fight. With the Shami Yaseir, we have more koiches. We can just do more. And I say to break up the fight and the Shabbos stick away. That's the best I could say. I want to share with everybody a song. I'm believing, we have spoken tonight about believing in Shabbos. Study, learn Svarim Rabbi say what Shabbos is. Read about Shabbos. And then no, do a lot. Sing in this home, jokes in this home, warm, delicious food. It's all an expression because we're experiencing the joys of Shabbos. So that's, but what Shabbos is, is not touched. So believe in Shabbos. Study a little what it is, sing the Zmira Shabbos, and that's one belief. And then when our kids struggle, people are saying, I believe in Shabbos, and I'm accessing for myself Shabbos. I say, believe in your children also. And I want to, we sang two Shabbos songs. I want to ask Aryeh Bar, Ari Barnett to sing a song on this believing in our children and believing and not losing one stitch of hope that's words that i love the stone that the builders rejected becomes the cornerstone i'm going to ask arye barnett composed the song it says that's about david amelech the rejected one becomes the most holy and an encouragement not to ever lose hope in a child i want arye as a song but this is like a speech this will be better than my speech. I'm asking Shloyme Kramer for everybody. We have so many people. Hanoch Hertz is here. Gabriel Reichman, Yitzchak Klapholz. I'm asking Zaki Perkels here. I want to ask the Chevra. This song is a speech. So this you can't listen casually. If I can ask everybody to really listen to the words. I love this song. It's about David HaMelech, this song. And this song is really a lot, we're talking about believing in Shabbos was really the first message. Believing in our children and not letting go of that belief was message too. So Yosef, I wish you were here to sing, but listen to this one, Yosef Casper. We're gonna sing a song, David HaMelech. If everybody could hear these words about the belief in Shabbos, I think you'll appreciate it a lot. Here it goes. <laughs> What are you doing? 
What are you doing with your life? You need some direction. If you're ever gonna get it right, so why can't you be like the rest of your family? So put down your heart and maybe pick up something useful. Why can't you just fit in? Why won't you just fit in? Kept on singing in the meadows green, red flame and air flowing in the wind, far from where the eyes can see. And nobody knew that deep inside he was so alive, and nobody knew that when he cried, he had a story to tell. He was forging his own, he was singing his own song, doing something you never seen before, and they all said he was wrong. Something, something no one saw. He didn't stop. No, he didn't stop. He had a unique vision, let go intuition, original compositions, his own inspiration for something beautiful. And in his own rendition, even though no one was listening, he just kept on singing and singing and singing, composing, exposing a bottomless ocean, a well of emotion, just kept on growing and wouldn't stop flowing. And God said, There's a man been singing alone in the meadows green that he calls his own, and nobody knows yet. Cause it isn't the right time, but that time's coming. Now that all go their minds, yeah, that one's mine. That one's gonna be mine. Many years later, he had been forgotten, cast out as a failure. The one rotten black sheep in a family so prestigious That when the call was heard People need a leader, we all need a new teacher They were the first Not you, not you, not you, not you, not you He didn't understand He didn't understand And the prophet said Is there another son? said we have David. David's got a lot going on. None of us really understand him. We let him do his thing. He sits in the forest. And, I mean, he's not what you're looking for, but if you think it's worth a shot, I guess we can, we can try it. David, whoever wants to talk to David, what is it you do? Sit outside, watch my sheep, talk to God. And the prophet said, Maybe you played something you wrote. Family was embarrassed, but he said, You know what? Let's go give it a go. Cheer the mothers. Sorry, now you're ringing. We are in your voice, we are sorry, now. May I never yes me Who is the one that I've been searching for? He's got something original, something beautiful, something I ain't ever seen before. I want you to play your song for all the thousands, and they'll sing forevermore. They'll sing forevermore. Oh, day. God, you kept keeping on when they told you not to. Though it took some time for us to see the value, I'm so glad you didn't stop being you. I'm so glad you never stopped. Oh, David, why didn't you give up when they told you to stop? When they told you you'd never be enough, how'd you keep on moving? How'd you know that you could? 
that you had something on me. You can sing that you had a song on me. You can sing how'd you know? How'd you know? How'd you know? How'd you know? Heaven, my soul. I'm burning, I'm I smell the rush being out. Heaven, my soul. I'm burning, I smell the rush being out. I smell the rush being out. I'm David, David, David. Will you be our king? Kalish, next time I think I'm going to come down to Waterbury. We're going to do it. Let's invite the whole Chaver, Rebash. All 800 people, all 1,000 people will come. <laughs> You're a unifier, Rebash. You probably could pull it all together. <clears throat> Are we ready for the next question? Let's do warmed it. Up. Getting warmed up. Okay. So here we have, as a woman of the house, I cook, prepare, schlep, shop. When my kids were younger, they were more involved, but now they're older. By the time Shabbos comes, I feel like a shmata. There's two questions here. Number one, how do I get my kids to be involved in all the preparations? Number two, what do I do? As the woman, what do I do to be able to continue? I love... I. Reb Menachem, I love that question. And first of all, like the, the hard work, everybody, whoever's in that home and all of us appreciate the hard work that mothers and fathers do is appreciated. But I want to say practically to everybody that Yiddishkeit and martyrdom are not, do not go hand in hand. Hachana for Shabbos should be done as best as possible. We're all human. We all know a busy home and how much work it takes to get ready for Shabbos as best as possible to be done in a way that doesn't make us a shmata. So I'm, I'm fully, you know, sympathizing the hard work for Shabbos. All mitzvahs, it's important to have what's called simcha shel mitzvah. And the manner of performing a mitzvah should be done in a way that's not that doesn't break us apart. It actually gives us chaos. So I would say that part of anybody's avayda, the preparing for Shabbos is a mitzvah in itself. And every mitzvah should be performed b'simcha as best as possible and to do as much as possible. Anything that could be done that doesn't make the person feel like a shmata. Simcha shel mitzvah is huge. And again, I don't want to sound, it sounds so not only to prepare for Shabbos, you tell me I have to do it happily. I'm talking about to make attempts and to do things if we have to spread it over longer and certainly to encourage everybody to help and get involved, but as best as possible to do it in a way that doesn't make us feel like a shmata. So I think all mitzvahs have to be done with thought and the amounts that we can, and maybe even the principle of doing less besimcha might be worth more than more not besimcha. So sometimes people knock themselves out to do extra, but then they're not besimcha. One of the advice I would tell such a such a question is better to do less besimcha. So maybe you don't make four kugels, you make one or two kugels, but you made those kugels besimcha. Better less besimcha than more not besimcha. So it's hard. We certainly want to put our best foot forward for Shabbos, but part of the ingredients and nachanais, I would say that rule better less besimcha than more ba'atzva. Simcha shel mitzvah is huge. So I would really encourage that questioner to maybe do less. Now, somebody could say even less is a lot. Never be memayat. The mamas and the amount the Yiddish mama puts into Shabbos is staggering. And it's all of us have to appreciate that. And the amount, hachanel Shabbos, I think knowing its value could help us, but I do say that principle. 
Try to follow that principle. Less besimcha might be worth more than ba'atzvos as one principle that will help to answer that question. So I do want to say that. Okay, Mary, Let's cover like one or two more questions if we have time, and then we'll go to closing. Sure. Let me send the question. I'll be honest. I struggle with Shalom bias, and I struggle with my relationship with my kids, especially my teenagers. So Shabbos is the hardest day for me. I might be late in the game. What can I do now? It's such a hard day because it's hard. People that I am home with and spending a lot of time with, with relationships that are, I don't know the right word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so hard because I don't want to just, that there's so many questions and good, really good questions. I don't want to be like a hardened person. First of all, just like an answer box and the questions are heavy, the questions themselves. I can't hear all these questions and not pray, Rav Asher. I'm gonna ask everybody to join in. I wanna pray for challenges. And, and if that's part of the answer, it is to pray, because I really feel it's heavy. It's not, and, and people describe, everything we said tonight is true, the power of Shabbos and the power of our souls. And that's my main message. But I don't want to just flippantly like say, you know what you should do? I think I'm not so wise. I'm really just hurt from the question is, sir, you're expressing, sir, there's a lot of challenges. We gather together tonight to speak about the etzem thing called Shabbos that's untouched and the etzem thing called the soul that's untainted. And I wanted to give those messages clearly and Shabbat, that is the essence of Shabbos the untainted soul with the connection to Hashem. And that's a message for everybody in all difficult situations. I'm a little being unfair, people are asking, but I have questions within my situation. What we spoke are good answers, but I need to pray. We can hear, I would be so shallow to hear questions of Tsar and just be like, well, I think you should do. Firstly, I just wanna pray with you. I'm asking, I'm going to lead a prayer here in my house. We have Danny Green is here. We have Aryeh Weiss, one of my best friends in the world, is with us. I asked Rev. Aryeh, if I can unmute everybody, it wouldn't work. I don't, can't unmute everybody, but I'm asking, I want to see moving lips. I'm looking at the screens. Ashi Jeremiah set this whole thing up. I'm asking everybody to pray with me. If I don't see your lips moving, Ashi, I don't know if you could type messages to people who don't sing. If you know the song, Levi Perlman, sing with me. If everybody, the Rust family, Hano Hertz, Yismo, Ari Nachlin's here. If everybody can please sing with me. Asha, you send tough messages if you see voices, not lips not moving. Here, there's no Kalisha from your house. We can't hear you. Everybody's invited to sing, Rabbi. Say, let's pray to you. I want to pray. We're hearing Yisurim. Then, then I want to speak for a, mi- a couple of minutes about the Yisurim we're hearing. But I want to, I want to pray, and we're going to pray together. If everybody could join me, we're going to start. Arya, let's do a high. Should I ring another? <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. I saw Rav Asher was singing. Rabbi Isa, I want to... I wanna... Wait, wait, Rabbi Kedosh, Rabbi Kedosh, let's, let's do one more question, and then let's go to the closing, Rabbi Kedosh. We're gonna, we're gonna, I want to encompass in the closing all the, all our gushes, because we're talking about really a hoicha and the shamazach, and a spiritual thing, and it's a feeling. It's not so much the answer. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they say the question is better than the answer. So let's ask one more question, because somebody came in, and, and Menachem was going to ask you to text me. So Menachem, go for the last question. Here we go. I want Rabbi Kedush to answer. I got I got another ten texts, Rabbi. Rabbi can I read? I want to just read one more. Don't answer this one. I'm just reading it. There's no answer. This is a beautiful message. A message to all those who believe in our kids. I make I make a beautiful job. So however, I'm a single mother, and my kids are aware that we are different, and our family is fragmented. So as a nice Shabbos, their difference is most pronounced on Shabbos and Shul. At the table, how could I have them appreciate Shabbos? Like it's the same, you know, it's the same. Now I can go to the next one and then just, we'll just, I don't know. Let's answer Here we the go. One. Here we go. If my husband is not a passionate by nature or able to express excitement and simcha sechaim in a way to give that over to the kids, just because that's, that's his personality or maybe that's the way he grew up or maybe he went through something, how can I, as the mother, Give that over to the kids in the best possible way. Um, specifically at the Shabbos table, where my husband is usually more the dominant one, talking about the parsha, asking the kids question, what could she do in that situation? So, so I would like as the foul, I, I would like to address, and I'm gonna they were intelligent questions, like Ravasha says, every question is good. I would like to address to everybody here, really, as this will be my closing statement. And I want to say something that will take a few minutes. It's late at night. It's Sunday night. People already stayed up crazy late. You are rewarded. Aryeh's song, that David HaMelech song, might have already made it worth it. Certainly here in Akiva, the Hebrew, Benjamin's David singing, Hashem Ali Rachmim. But I want to, this late hour, I want to address many questions of all different things about communicating to our children. And these are all forms of questions that I want to tell my kids, how do I express it to them? How do I teach them? Maybe even the question of teaching to a spouse who doesn't have so much, how do I teach the next person? I want to tell you a, a story and I think this will help everybody better teach the next person, especially our youth. I'm going to tell you a secret. You stayed up on a Sunday night. It's close to 1130. I have to make it worth your while. I'm going to tell you a secret that I've seen with kids. And I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story. Kids tend to be shamay. I'm going to explain that to you. Kids are shamay. Adults are Hillel. And learn to connect shamay and Hillel. Let me explain this. I mean this sincerely. And it will help in all our communications, handing Shabbos to our kids and all the gifts of Yiddishkeit. Please hear this, Rabbi Say. There's Yaakov Avinu in Mitzrayim, one of the first moves. Yaakov teaches every year that to live in Gullus, and he bows to Yosef Atzadik. That is an inappropriate picture. 
The father is bowing to a son that's inappropriate. The picture doesn't seem right. The brothers didn't like this prophecy of Yaisim HaTzadik because the father should not bow to a son. And Yaakov Avinu taught Yaisim HaTzadik and taught us a rule in Gullus. Tale be'idne sagidle. I make all my children memorize this. Tale a fox. I like animals a lot. I've seen a fox walk in Blue Ridge. We have Danny Greens here. We've seen foxes. Tale be'idne. A fox in his time. Sagidle. Bow to him. Bow to the fox. Now for years, I've wanted to teach the guys in Yeshiva this. If a fox is in, is, it's his time, bow to him. If you have a teacher and the teacher is asking things from the kids that are not acceptable. So I want to teach the kids, but he's in charge. She's in charge of the classroom. The fox in his time bow to him. It doesn't feel right. This is Golos. And bow to the fox. He's in charge. She's in charge. You know how many Bakram have worked in summer camps at jobs? And they say, what does the boss want from me? He's out of his minds. And I want to teach the youngster, Tale Be'idne Sagile. He's the boss. He shouldn't be. He doesn't know how to be, but bow to the boss. Tale Be'idne Sagile. And Rav Asher, I've had very little atzlacha teaching this to youth till I learned the secret that I'm going to share with everybody here. Rev Josh, you'll, uh, tell me if you mask him. Why didn't it work? The truth should work. I have found in my career in Chenuch, when you give the truth to people, Nikarim Divrei Emes, they hear it as true and it works. And if it doesn't work what you're teaching, then maybe you're not teaching the truth. The truth people accept and the truth wins. So why doesn't it work? I'm teaching kids my whole life. Tale, I don't get you. He's in charge. Bow. I, I met with a youngster, a precious youngster, who's struggling with her principal. And I wanted to teach the youngster, Tale Bidne Sagadle. She's in charge. Nope, you gotta, you gotta behave. Why doesn't it work? This is what I realized. Shammai, if you know the Machloik is Shammai and Hillel, Shammai is Sipisa li Yeshua. Shammai always anticipates the glorious future. And Hillel lives a beautiful present now. Shammai is all about what could be, what will be, and what should be. And Hillel is making the now work. Shammai is a chefs of tzipisal Yeshua, hoping for Yeshua. I always wonder, the kid struggles with his dad. I always wonder, and he gets on the bus, why doesn't he vision? And he always gets mad, the same thing in the house gets him angry. I always wondered why can't he accept his father's emotionally is emotionally limited. So visualize your father's limitation and accept. And yet the kid fights it every time. Why can't he accept? And the answer is because youngsters are shamay. See peace Yeshua. Youngsters always dream of what could be and should be and struggle to accept what is. Old people can have Hillel. We have to make beautiful what is and make this the best. Tale bidne sagidli. What I want to say, if you give Musr to somebody at the point when I started realizing that the person really was Tipis Ali Yeshua, was struggling to accept they had what to teach me. And Kalish. Be it see peace of Yeshua, Nick. Hope for the best and the right thing. At the point I could be makir the see peace of Yeshua and the other person, I could then tell them tali be'idne sagidli. You can only tell somebody musr if you see people are great and the shrashim of us all is very halig. Our shrashim, our roots are good. And the roots of the youngsters, many things you're seeing your children have beautiful roots. Many times it's a tzipisal Yeshua root of a hope of what could be. I'll even tell you, Hever, when you're, if a kid struggles with Shabbos, and I mean this, 
deep down, you know why he struggles with Shabbos? Because he holds, this is not real. I don't feel it. Do you know that's a Tzipisel Yeshua Mida? Do you know a kid, and, and he can't be Mechalo. Keep what you can. This is where you're up to. I keep things that I don't feel. And I hope one day to feel. A lot of kids on Mechalo Shabbos, it comes from a show. It's wrong. Chas v'sholem, we're not condoning, and we got to work hard and connect the Shabbos and hand Shabbos. Do you know a lot of our kids struggle with Shabbos is rooted in Sipi Sali Yeshua? Because they want to feel as we should. We should feel. So they say, I can't do this. I want to feel. You know how many kids I have to convince Talib B'idne Sagili? This is the situation. Pray. Tell a kid, a youngster, just pray. But I don't feel anything. Okay. Talib B'idne Sagili. What you have, deal with the Metsius. Deal with what is. Yosef's the king. Even the father bows to the king. This is what is. Hillel is a force of dealing with what the present. There's a beauty to Hillel, but there's a beauty to Shammai. Laas in love, we paskin like Shammai. A lot of the roots of our children is they dream what should be and what could be and don't accept what is. You know how many youngsters I had to convince, pray, I also, we all, sometimes we have Kabbana, sometimes we don't. But let's be present and do what we can. The Shairish of the youth is dreaming what should be and what could be, and often that gets them in trouble. We need Hillel, and we pass him like Hillel. And all of us adults have to teach Hillel. But if we see the Tzipi Sali Yeshua and our children, the Shrashim, of where they're coming from, you're dreaming of purity and sincerity, and I'm inspired by that. Wow, I'm going to incorporate a CP Sali Yeshua. If I see the goodness in the in the youngster, if I see the CP Sali Yeshua, by the way, I get changed. I get impacted. I see that they're wistfully hoping. You know how many guys have told me I can't die because I don't have Kavana? And I'm like, Daniel, you have to really start yearning for more kavana. I'm good at praying even when I space out because adults can incorporate. I'm trying to be as sincere as I can be. But the youngster has a tzipisal Yeshua hope for the idyllic life. And I'm inspired by that. And only when I'm inspired can I teach Tali Bidde Sagidli. So I want to say to everybody here, that we all want to give our youth and hand them all the beauty, you should know their neshamas, big ones. And a lot of shrush, the shrush, not a lot. Our shrushim are good. Our roots are good. Your, your, we're good and our children are good. There's so much guilt and shame. We said that to Kunezaya earlier. Shabbos is icy is baishas. There's a song I like and I play in my car to Bachem who come in my car. And the song, though, I like this whole song because it has the words, when Mashiach comes, the ambers of shame, they melted away. That Mashiach is going to remove Baishas, all the shame that's rampant. The sense and the shame is the Nikuda that people feel there's just the body. And Shabbos Kaidesh teaches us we're so much more. We can get in touch that we're more. And we lose ourselves in Zmiris. We give brachas one to another. We just mivarech another yid. We see goodness in another yid. And I say to us all that the musr we want to give, the instruction that we have, if we see goodness at the point, you know at the point that I started seeing Tzipisil Yeshua, I was able to teach Tali Be'idnei Sagadli. When I saw that they're just yearning for a great tomorrow, I can teach an acceptance of today, Hillel and Shammai. Both forces powerfully woven together. I have seen this in many, many, many areas. The hour is late. The hour is very late. I'm telling you in all the Musa and all the instruction that we give, if, if we give instruction, Rev Hirsch said that the bedrock of education is respect. All the chenuch we give, if it comes from a place of seeing a precious person, my son is doing this. My daughter in the closed room is doing that. 
My daughter looks like this. My husband's doing that. And these are difficult challenges, difficult. I don't want in any way be makta. We daven to Hashem together because the challenges are overwhelming. And we pray to Hashem that Yidin should have bracha and atzlacha. But I want to say, I can't say it enough, and I don't want to sound callous. My name is Kalish. I don't want to be callous. And I say to everybody, I say to everybody here that no matter what's going on and the different methods of dealing with it, but this has to be there practically, I mean, that you see the specialness that you always knew. That's not a size point. And if you want to know what Shabbos is, that's what Shabbos is. Kedusha Shabbos. Hashem was Mikade Shabbos. It means contained in Shabbos, that mitziv that we started with. Is it ois, beiniu veinechem, is a sign and a mark that we're able to be margish, that we can feel a neshama yaseira. The slanimer, the nesiva shalom says that even if our neshama is so megoshem, has been tainted by physicality, come Shabbos is neshama yaseira, we sense we are more. We have a minigin yeshiva, I Brownstein Shlit, that started that before Kabbalah Shabbos, everybody greets each other. And then together we greet Shabbos. We greet each other. It's a shtickle like the Gemara. They used to go out together as a chabura to greet Shabbos Kodesh, but it means they first gathered together. They first was a hisachtos. And we gather together and greet each other, and then together as a one unit, as the children of Hashem, we greet Shabbos Kodesh. And I want to say to us all that Shabbos is a day that we can get in touch with Kedusha, that we're more than physical, we're more than bodies. We could sense it in ourselves with all our shortcomings. Stop with the guilt and the shame. Baishas turns into Shabbos, switch to Isis around. Make Kiddush. Hashem wants your Kiddush. Your Kiddush. No matter what this one he wants, your Kiddush. Gather the Mishpacha Tzazam and make a Kiddush. Say bye to the angels. Say Ischem L'Shalom, Reb Pinkus, you're wonderful angels. I welcome you and love you. Give them a hug on their way out. And then say Ischem L'Shalom, Chevra, Yid's making Kiddush. And then together accept Kedusha Shabbos, which says something to me and you, that you and I are more than a body. We could see in our children, you ask your son, this is Kiddush, but you're at Kiddush. Hug your son on Tuesday with the Kiddush, with Kedusha Shabbos with what you learned on Shabbos and what you experienced on Shabbos. Plug in ourselves. Plug in ourselves to Ketusha Shabbos. Let Shabbos do its magic. Sing this mirrors of Shabbos. This is the great tranquility. The Neshama comes here and is Mas and Eilam It's very unsettled as many of our kids are. It's unsettled as holiness to that because it's in this world, it's confused. Ba Shabbos, Ba Menuchel. Shabbos, it's tranquil because it sees in this world we're Shaykh Tektosha. In this world, we feel our, everybody wants to feel themselves. Every child and all of us want to feel our essence. I want to be me. That's why our kids dress in funny clothing, in expression of self, self expression. We all want to feel ourselves. During the week, the soul is very unsettled. Am I, is, am I, I'm just an Eved Leparoi. Comes Shabbos, Shabbos Kaidesh, and we feel that we're more than a body. And that experience connects us to Hashem. When we connect to that place of Kedusha, that's above the physical world, we connect profoundly to Hashem, the Kedusha of Shabbos. So my bracha to everybody. Hashem, Taka Hashem Malay Rachmin, Rachem Malay, should have mercy on us all. Kabbal Tachnun, I listen to our prayers that our husbands should heal, our wives should heal. Klal Yisrael should passionately feel Kedusha Shabbos and feel our preciousness. And then together, let's hand our children. I, we, the topic was Lasa Shabbos Adaraisam. The answer is you don't have to do so much. Shabbos is real. Tap into Shabbos and without crushing it too much, doesn't matter what voice, Make less kogel, not more. This lady's overwhelmed from cooking for Shabbos. Cook a little less and do besimcha with great joy. Try, it's hard. There's a lot of tasks to be done. But let's put in, let's put in because Shabbos is precious. Shabbos can't be tainted. 
I experienced my Shabbos. You know how many people say my Shabbos was hurt, my husband does this, my wife, my mother, my grandmother, my bab. Nisyanus, Shabbos doesn't get touched. The Nefesh Yisrael doesn't get touched and Shabbos doesn't get touched. That is, the, that is Shabbos in its purity. Tap into Shabbos, which is untainted and untouched and hand it to your child who's that place that's untainted and untouched. See your child with precious eyes no matter what. And everybody should be zeichet, all of us, to feel our own greatness, to feel our own specialness, and to hand that to our children. It's obvious we're going to end with a song, because that's just what we do. So before we play, pray Rav Hashem Ali Rachimim, Ba'atem Tiuli Mamleches can be Goy Kadesh, the focus on Goy Kadesh. We're a Goy Kadesh, a nation of Kedusha. Shoivivim, work on Kedusha Shabbos. A happier, that mother whose kids fight in the other room, Kedusha, we're more than a body. We find the patience we didn't know we had. And we work on the, working on helping them get along with Kedusha, knowing I'm more than a body. Looking at each one, both combatants, they're more than bodies. And to see them in that way, let's sing that to you. Okay, just one second. I'm going to wrap it up and then we're going to end it off with the song. Give me one minute, okay? Sure, sure. Uh, first of all, Gersh Yashkoya from, from me, Menachem, for the Gansa Oila, for coming on tonight, Rabbi Kalish. Tonight was, was, was like at a different level. It's like, you're not talking to the, you know, Rabashka once said a word, he says, one time when you're talking to, to, to the kid, if you talk to his Nisham, he's going to hear you. If you're talking to the, to the people's Nishamas, you know what I mean? So that's, that's what I thought tonight. It was an unbelievable share, and Hashem, I think we should listen to it again and again to finally get it. And again, everybody wants to join the WhatsApp. Every Sunday, I send out the flyer to the speakers, 848-525-0066. Go to menachembernfeld.com and sign up for the, for the flyers. Again, next week, January 29th, Harava Goyen, the double gold, double gold washer street that was here before, who's an unbelievable person. Hopefully, some of these harder questions, some of these, you know, the desire that we have, the she is out to say, she'll never give up. And um, he's going to, let's see what he does with that. So hopefully bring bring on bring on all these things. And uh, Rabbi Goldwasser is amazing. It should be an amazing program. Please join, let people know about it. People need chizik. We're here Sunday night to be mechazik each other, Rabbi Kalish, right? Yeah. So, so, and make sure everything's recorded. It's going to be on manachemberfield.com. If you have any questions, email coachmanachemberfield.com. Tonight's share is 129. Hashem Kim. It's all recorded, and it's Shem. You can listen on the phone, 848-777-GROW. Again, um, thank you to the advertising sponsors, like the Scoop, Elliot Ira from Five Town Central, Robert Kalish spoke of Anachem. Two words, two minutes. What, what's the takeaway from tonight? Let's go. What are we taking away? First of all, first of all, just a thank you. It's really, really deep, like we heard. And the way I see it is, is, is real transformation. Basically going from negative to positive, and yes, sometimes it does. It is a challenge, obviously, but we heard it and we, and we felt it tonight. And sometimes we don't feel it, but we do it anyways. And to look with different eyes, to look with different eyes at myself and the people around me. And before you know it, things will change. And that's what we heard. So thank you very, very much. I'm sure help us all. We should be able to have a tzloch and bracha with whatever relationships we have with relationship with Hashem, with Shabbos, with our spouse and our children in Mitzvah. Okay. Rabbi Kalish, let's go. We're waiting. Rabbi Kalish, your song. Rav Asha, you tell me, should we sing that? Should we save that song and do a sh- pray again, Hashem Ali Rachemim? Do you want us to all sing that? Now that I learned it, either we pray that and Rav Asha, you decide, okay, or I, we I, pray. It's up to me. I, I choose... I choose. Kemal Rachmim and Tati, my king. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're getting both. Um, Shlomo Guri is going to sing Tati, my king. That's the last thing we're going to do. But first, which one do you want first, Rav Asher? I think we do, I think we do Tati, my king, and then we end up Kemal Rachmim. You remember I, we did that play once with Ellie Metz, Rav Asher? I just saw that Ellie Metz is on. I asked Mechila, we didn't do any plays this time, Rav Asher. Next time. Next I time. wasn't on. I wasn't now on. Now you have to come back again. <laughs> just, know, just know I got a request for Michaela. She didn't work out. Somebody requested that Shira 130 is the Gematria Ayin Toiv. Ayin, 130 is Ayin. And Rabbi Kayla should give the Shira an Ayin Toiv. I'm just saying. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Asher, for your kind words. <laughs>
Yeah. Ellie, the next, Belina, the next time, maybe, maybe, no promise, maybe, Ellie, if you invite me, I don't know if I lost my invitation, but maybe next, if Ellie's masking, maybe we'll do another skit, Rev Ellie. Rev Ellie's teaching the world, he's, he's learning, doing incredible things. I really appreciate that. Didn't get all the names who are on. I'm not good with the computer and didn't see everybody. As your work, I see. But you asked Rav Asher, we're doing Hashem Ali Rachim. Everybody sing. This time, everybody. We'll do it one time through it. Hashem Ali Rachim. And then we'll end the night with Shlomo Guri singing Tati My King. So let's go. Aryeh start as high key. Hashem Ali Rachim. Rachim Quest, you don't have to do it unless you turn the camera and with the boys together, everything. Last song. What, what, Tati, my king, or that again? Whichever one you want, but with, with the Bakram. You want the Tati, my king? Yeah. Get the guitar. Let's go. Do it. Let's go. Are you, let's go. Benachem, it's the water, boy, water boys, boys choir. Maybe it's going to go viral. Start off single and then zusammen.
here, Rabbi Kalish. Thank you for giving us the dose of energy. We need Rabbi Kalish. I'm sorry, but Yavana Christ, we need this more for them. Sorry. <laughs> Kalish, we thank all you. love you. Yeah, thank you, Rabbi Thank you, Rabbi Nachum. Good night to you and all your Tyra Bachram. And uh, the, 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 the pureness and the condition and the Hava should just, we should all see through the. Through through the wires of 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 these of these zooms and these you know these videos that should seep into all the rabbeim and all the talmidim and all the boys and everybody. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Good night. We'll see you next good week. Night, good, night, good night, Rabbi. Say good night, Rabbi. That's right. Now all the bachim can do tikkun chatzos. <laughs> Take care. Have a great night.